JP Della Camera, thank you so much for joining us today. For anyone that doesn't know you, although there probably aren't many out there, who are you? What's your role? Uh, soccer play-by-play, -play, have done it for many years, um, many decades, actually, now that I think of it. Uh, 16 World Cups, 10 men, six women, love what I do, couldn't dream of doing anything that would bring me more satisfaction than doing these games. Seems like you're living everyone's dream. I know you because you're a union guy, but you've been, some people might recognize your voice from something recently, the 2022 World Cup. You were there. What did you make of the U.S. men's national team performance? I thought that they went as far as I thought they would go, to be honest. I, I totally expected them to get out of the group. I had no doubt they would get out of the group. And then the rest of it is a crapshoot. Like when people say, how far can they go? Well, show me who they're going to play next, right? Because if, if their next opponent was going to be France, well, then they're not going to go much farther, right? Or if it was Argentina, whoever it was, right? In this case, it was the Netherlands, right? I watched in the Netherlands in the summer during the UEFA Nations League, and I thought, this is a good team. And I think when they were playing the U.S., they were like unbeaten in 16 or 17, something like that. So, yeah. So I didn't, I didn't have high hopes for the U.S. I wanted them to win, obviously, but I thought it was going to end there. So I think they went as far as they could. Um, the things that we thought were good from them were good. The things that we worried about, we're still worried about. We still don't have a number nine. We don't have a number nine. Our center backs are aging. We don't necessarily have great developing players in those roles just yet. They're out there, but they've yet to be identified. Greg Berhalter is still a question mark up in the air. What are you looking forward to in the next few months and years for the U.S. team in terms of coaching and developing players? Well, I think, first of all, um, with all this controversy, you know, U.S. has to decide uh, what they're going to do with a coaching situation. And until that happens, it's hard to speculate on the direction, right? Because a lot of it is, this is who your coach is and what their philosophy is and how do the players adjust to it, right? Uh, you're not going to have to qualify for the next yep. World Cup. I think that's a bad thing uh, for a lot of teams. For some, it, it could turn out to be good, but it hurts you with the competition, right? And I think you can say CONCACAF's improving if you'd like. I won't argue that. Yeah, they are improving, but if you want to be the best that you can be, you got to do something outside of your region. And with all these nations leagues and, and other competitions that they have, it's hard to play meaningful friendlies like you used to. So is it Copa America? Is it your own tournament? Whatever it is, we need to find that in the next couple of years. If it is Gold Cup and Copa America, do you feel like that's enough to prepare us for 2026? Or is there something else that's kind of like the secret sauce that we need to find? There is no secret sauce, I don't think, uh, Jake. But I mean, if there was, I, I probably wouldn't know what it was. But I think that the more games you can play against quality competition, you know, hey, give me USA Mexico five times a year, six times a year. I don't care. It's always going to be good, right? And and we will make them better. They will make us better, yeah. right? Can't say the same about if you're playing Jamaica or Honduras or Panama, right? But there are some countries where you could say that. So I think you've got to find a way in this very crowded calendar, even if it is friendlies. I mean, there's got to be a way to find meaningful friendlies somewhere, even with Nations League going on. And the, I think the more games like that that we can find, the better. Yeah. Now, switching gears a little bit, there is a World Cup this year, the yeah. Women's World Cup, held in Australia and New Zealand. The U.S. Women's National Team is in a bit of a transition period. We are going for our third in a row title. However, last year was saw some of the worst form that we've seen from the U.S. Women's National Team. They're currently in New Zealand right now preparing for some friendlies. What are you seeing? What are you expecting from the women's national team this year? I said today in an earlier seminar that I don't think they have weaknesses, but they do have question marks, right? And, and maybe more question marks than we've ever seen on this women's World Cup side. So starting at the back, who's our goalkeeper? They're splitting time between Alyssa Nair and Casey Murphy. So we have to identify who that number one goalkeeper is. Today, I believe it's Alyssa Nair. But after these two games in New Zealand, you know, are they splitting them? What are they, what are they doing? So we'll find out, right? Uh, but I think we have good goalkeepers, but you have to decide on who it is, right? I think we have at least, if everybody's healthy, four good center backs. But who are the two that are going to get a bulk of the time? I can't answer that now. I don't know, right? Only Vladko Andonovsky 
can answer that. I think that we've never replaced Julie Ertz, and no one talks about Julie Ertz, so I don't know. Does Julie want to come back? And play? I have no idea, right? If she does, there's nobody better at that position than her. If she doesn't, Andy Sullivan's good, but there's no one-for-one -one switch, you know? So do you keep the same formation? Do you play with, with two? And that we're like, what do you do, right? So that's, that's a concern. And then injuries. I worry about injuries. Like, Cap Macario is terrific. Is she going to be the Cap Macario, right, fully healthy? If she is, that's fantastic, right? I've never seen as many injuries as our national team had last year. When you think about it, Tierna Davidson. It even seems across the women's game, the yeah, landscape yeah, sure. as well. We're seeing that with Vivian Miedema. But, I mean, even, like, Sam Mewis is not back. She was injured last year. So we've got to get some of these players back healthy. I still think on paper... You know, we're the best, I say we, you know, the U.S. is the best on paper, but paper doesn't lift trophies, doesn't play the games. So we did a bit of future looking. I want to look back in the past because I dare say you're a legend of the sport here in the U.S. Looking back on your storied career, is there anything that really sticks out to you as a moment that you'll always think about? 1999 was the World Cup final because I remember so much about it, um, so much about the game, the fans, the stadium, um, injuries just so many things I remember about that day. And, and the only other game that if somebody said, your two most memorable games, that was one, and the game in Trinidad, 1989 World Cup qualifier. But I, I remember so little about that game. What I remember are the fans there that filled that stadium four hours maybe before kick, everyone in red except for two rows of American fans. There were no... Uh, American outlaws then, you know, those were U.S. soccer people that were sitting in the stands. And I remember people painting their cars red, their houses red. Trinidad had a national holiday the day after the game. They expected a win. I remember all that stuff, but the game itself, more of a blur. I remember Caligiuri's goal that came from out of nowhere, but compare that to like Women's World Cup with the drama and everything I remember, it's probably a distant second. It seems like that the energy of the day yeah, was what he remembered. Yeah. Awesome. Amazing. Thank you so much for the time. I want to thank you and Fox Sports as well for all the free press for It's Called Soccer during the World Cup. <laughs> hey, we do what we can. <laughs> Helping help the little guys. Man, we do what we can. Thank you, JP. Appreciate it. My pleasure.